Rock and Roll Geek Show 901, motherfuckers. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Saturday, January 19th, 2019, and it is 6.54 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. It's been two weeks exactly since I posted an episode. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that I got one out so soon, to be honest with you, but, uh, well... I've been in a little bit of a funk as, you know, everybody goes through these little funks and uh, I'm no different than anybody else. So I kind of, I just needed to uh, take a little break and recharge the batteries. That's the only excuse I have. So I'm not making any excuses, but when you're in a little funk, sometimes the best way to get out of it is to uh, crack open a Tecate, take a sip. Ah, Play some music for your friends and with your friends and read some emails and just have a a wonderful Saturday night train wreck, friends. So here we are on episode 901, almost a thousand. I didn't celebrate episode 900, but I did. Well, I kind of did. I had a Richie Rano on the show. Yeah, but think of a better way to celebrate episode 900 than having Richie Rano on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. So, I'm going to start off right now with a little bit of payola. I am a fan and supporter of payola. Payola means, well, back in the, if everybody knows what payola is, but back in the 70s or in the early days of, of the record business, um, record labels or A&R guys used to go up to record radio stations and, well, actually, back to in the 50s, Alan Freed got... Uh, in big trouble for for accepting payola. But since the beginning of rock and roll, record labels and A&R executives have gone up to radio stations, greased, their, greased the DJ's palms with a little bit of uh, money, cocaine, hookers, and anything else that uh, DJs might like and uh, in order for them to play their music. And... The Rock and Roll Geek Show podcast is no different, friends. I am a firm believer in payola. And speaking of payola, I got an uh, email and payola donation from friend of the show, BJ Lisko. What's up, Butler? Friend of the show, BJ Lisko of the band Turbo Lovers here, dropping you some praise on your year-end best-of list. What better way to, to give somebody payola and ask them to play their music by uh, giving them a little ass-kissing, a little uh, compliment? I agree with just about everything you picked, and just like in last year, in years past, you've turned me on to a band I hadn't heard of before. Massive Wagon's Full Nelson album is outstanding, and they somehow slipped my radar. To me, they sound a little, a little like Motley Crue meets Against Me. That album and Hank Von Hell's Egomania are neck and neck for my top album of 2018. And speaking of albums that came out in 2018... Turbo Lovers, my band, Almost Greatest Hits, was released, and I've included a download link here for the whole album. Also, I'm doing my annual check-in to see if Paylola is still alive. Paylola? Paylola isn't, but Paylola is. To see if Paylola is still alive and well on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Because I'm also throwing you another 20 bucks this month in hopes you'll pick a track from this album to play on the show. I'll let you pick whatever song you want to play. There's 17 songs, 5 are new, and 12 span 14 years of Turbo Lover's rock and roll nonsense. For your listeners, the album is available via Van, Bandcamp and iTunes. Again, thanks for all the cool recommendations and for entertaining us with another year of rock and podcast. Stay frosty, BJ from Turbo Lovers. All right. So, to honor BJ Lisko, friend of the show's Paola. By the way, friends, you too can, uh, if you want to get your band played on the Rock and Roll Geek Show, I can't think of a better way to do it than to send a little bit of payola, scratch. Let's see, do I prefer cocaine, money, or prostitutes? 
I guess I'll take, I guess, well, it's a tough one, but <clears throat> money's probably the best way. All right, friends. <laughs> Here is Turbo Lovers Rock and Roll Hell. Looking for another side of the action. It might be love and it's a deadly attraction. We are sitting here ready to go. We are sitting here ready, you know. Making rounds to all the non believers. From crowd to crowd, we'll be the overachievers. We want you to be ready to go. We want you to be ready to go, you know. Turbo Lovers, Rock and Roll Hell. That's a pretty good tune, uh, BJ Lisko. See what happens when you take a little bit of payola, you discover some good music. I like that. Thank you for sending it to me, um, BJ Lisko. You too can leave me some payola. Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com is the uh, email. And you can uh, PayPal me the payola, or you can send cash or prostitutes. or Okay, speaking of payola... I would like to thank the wonderful donors of the Rock and Roll Geek Show because, as you know, if you didn't donate to this show, this show would be <laughs> goodbye. All right, enough of that. So, what do I want to play in the background music? <clears throat> I'm 
I think I'll play some brand new or the latest Eureka Machines. I'm not sure who sent me this. It was either Phil Robinson or um, could have been Adrian Boschon. I'm not Bosch Rock on the for on the Rock and Geek forums or the uh, Facebook group, which I did not uh, create, but I do approve people. Just uh, find the one on Facebook, Rock and Roll Geek Show. So he, I didn't know this, but Phil Robinson said a uh, Chris Catalyst from Eureka Machines, the, the brainchild of the Eureka Machines and main songwriter and singer. He says he's one of the nameless ghouls in Ghost. I did not know that. Huh. He said, I'd love to hear an updated interview with Chris Catalyst. He's been pretty busy being a nameless ghoul for Ghost, but it looks like they're on a break until February. Good gig for good, good gig for, for Chris Catalyst. Huh. You learn something new every day, man. All right. So in the background, while, while I'm thinking the donations, I will, I'll play some Eureka Machines. Their, their record is called Victory. Little, or, yeah, vi- excuse me. It's called Victories. Let's do little little victories. And on and on and on we go. Good songwriter. Chris Cattle is a very talented dude. And good guitar player. All right. There are several ways you can donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends. I think I need to open another Tecate before I thank the donors. Reach down in my refrigerator here. Finish this one off. Not knowing how we're gonna survive. So there are several ways you can donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. As you know, this this show is, like Adam Curry says on his No Agenda podcast, the show is a value for value proposition, which means whatever value you get from the show, I ask that you return the value to me, the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Whether it be send me some music, <clears throat> you can do that. That's up. That's if that's what the kind of value it gives you. You can always send me some music, or you can send me some money, or you can. I'll tell you some other ways afterwards. But the the but one of the ways you can. The reason I say that because uh, I have another value for value that somebody sent me. They called into the Eddie Trunk Show, which is a good way to, to be a, a producer of the Rock and Roll Geek Show as well. But you can go to patreon.com slash rnrgeek and send a donation like the following people did. Michael Brown, my one of my oldest friends who I went all, to all the concerts with when I was growing up. He donates $25 an episode. Thank you, Michael Brown. Joe Pollack, friend of the show who I met in Nashville this last year, donates $6.60 an episode. Thank you to Ken Kennedy for the $5. Thanks to Daniel Segan for the $5. Thanks to Grant Fakwa for the $5. Thanks to Sean Hartwell for the $5. Thanks to Robert Harvey for the $5 every episode. Thanks to Jamie Jefford for the $5. Thanks to my good friend Shiaki Hinohara of the Metal Moment Podcast and the uh, Japanese, pardon me, I'm fine to Kate, Japanese Metalhead show. Thank you for $5. Thank you to Brian Springer for the $5. Thanks to John Boveri for the $5. Thanks to Derek Lewis for the $5. Thanks to Tim, oh, okay, we don't, no, still going, okay. Thanks to Tim Shaw for the $5. Thanks to Dan Garawan for the $5. Thanks to Michael Street, friend of mine and friend of the show, for the $5. Thanks to Betty Wood for $5. Thanks to Marshall York for the $5. Thanks to my podcast mentor, co-host of Mad at Dad, and host of the Evil Genius Chronicles, Dave Slusher, for the $5 every episode. Thanks to Derek Coward from Comic Book Noise Podcast for the five for the $2.50. Thanks to Chad Burns for the 250. Thanks to Paul Rube for the 225. Thanks to Patrick Shanahan for the two dollars. Thanks, thanks to Eric Stowell for the two dollars. Thank you to Mike Dixon for the two dollars. Thanks to Kurt Crawford for the two dollars. Thanks to Paul Underwood, maker of fine Underwood Robert barbecue sauce, for the two dollars. Thanks to Bruce McMillan for the two dollars every episode. What's the next song here? Hey little, hey ho, John Doe. Thanks to Bruce McMillan for the $2. Thanks to Steve McIntyre for the $2. Thanks to at Metal Dan 
Bonstone, John Richardson, Arnie Stash, Ron Embody, Three Legs, Four Wheels, Amy Bowen, and Corey Kohler, all for the $1 every episode on Patreon. You can also send me a PayPal donation like the following people did. Ooh, I like this. I'm in a boat, another merry-go-round And take the order for a shot of SD I got a huge donation that I missed back in December that Mark Bridges sent me $183.97. That's what I'm talking about. Let me repeat that. Thank you, Mark Bridges, for the $183.97. I take a sip of this fine Tecate to you, Mark Bridges, for the big donation of the month. Ah. Thank you to Paul Stansfield for the $50. Paul Stansfield is one of the run- the um, moderators of the Temperamental Aussie Divinals fan group page on Facebook. Thanks to Douglas Free for the $20. Thanks to my first girlfriend, Elodie Johns, for the $20. Thanks to BJ Lisco for the $20 payola. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $20. Thanks to Todd Cunningham, friend of the show and friend of mine, for the $10. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to Dave Jackson and School of Podcasting for the $10. Thank you to BJ Lisco for his usual $10 a month donation. Thanks to Jeff and Sherry Thielalilaki for the $10. Thanks to Ralph Miller, friend of the show and friend of mine for the $10. Thank you to Dave Franco for the $10. Thanks to James Venters for the $10. Thank you to John Tennis for the $5. Thanks to Greg Long for the $5. Thanks to Eric Lentz for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thanks to Richard Strom for the $5. Thanks to Michael Williams for the $5. Thanks to Andrew Howe all the way in Australia for the 5 bucks. Thanks to Dale a Roller for $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for another $5. Thanks to friend of the show Christopher Del Grande for the $5. Thanks to Jer O'Carroll for the $5. Thanks to... John Offenloch for the $5. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $5. Sigmund Heidacher for the $5. Thank you to Brett Garski for the $5. Benjamin Muller for the $5. Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, for the $2. Thank you to Richard Fusey for another $2. Thanks to Jason Wendleton for the $2. Lassie Satfenhagen, $2. John Skiller, $2. Bradford Page, $2. Peter Spark, $2. Adrian Boschon, creator of the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do. Okay. And finally, William Moffat for the $2. Thank you to everybody who donates to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. There's also an Amazon link at rockandrollgeek.com. Buy something on there, I get a kickback. Thank you to everybody for the donations. Without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death. I'll take a sip of this fine Tecate to everybody who donates to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Seriously, this show would not be, exist without you, friends. Ah. It is very much appreciated. And it makes me feel good. All right. So speaking of other ways you can uh, do give the value for value, I was saying you can do it like my friend Casey Crenshaw did. Casey Crenshaw called the Eddie Trunk Show and did like a Howard Stern. On Mad at Dad, I um, suggested maybe people call in to the Eddie Trunk Show and, and say – Little rock and roll geek catchphrases like, uh, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. Ah, what are, what are some of the other, um, uh, catchphrases that I do? Super great. Couldn't be better. Uh, <laughs> uh, without your show, without your donations, show it out. Horrible, a horrible putrid stench filled death is another one. Uh, 
anyway, you get the idea. There's plenty of things that I do that are uh, really stupid, but they are my catchphrases. They're kind of like the Baba Booies of the Howard Stern Show. They're, like, they're the Baba Booies of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. So, Casey called in. My good friend Casey called into Eddie Trunk's show. Eddie Trunk was doing his top five album. He was asking for top five albums for listeners. And Casey called into the Eddie Trunk show, held on, put, stayed on hold for like an hour and 15 minutes and got on the air. So let's listen to Casey Crenshaw calls into the Eddie Trunk show don't know you know what what they could do today but that's neither here nor there if it's a good record or not so we just created some awareness for him that maybe helps him out casey in san francisco go ahead casey eddie how you doing i'm great man good good glad to hear it i'm super great couldn't be better Very there good. you go there's one he got in a super great couldn't be better all right back it up a little bit i love casey Casey in San Francisco. Go ahead, Casey. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Eddie, how you doing? I'm great, man. Good, good. Glad to hear it. I'm super great. Couldn't be better. Very excited to be on the show. First time, long time. First time, long Thank time. You. Another uh, one. Here's my uh, top five for you. Uh, coming in number five, uh, Hank Von Hell, a Rio Turbo Negro fan. Uh, I'm aware of the band, but I don't know their music all yeah, that well. Yeah, of course you don't, Eddie Trunk. But I've heard nothing but great things. Uh-huh, about uh-huh. Yeah, hard rock and kind of punk influence, but um, awesome, awesome album. Awesome. Uh, number five, L.A. Guns alum, The Brutalist, self-titled oh, album. Little, also, uh, little um, um, <clears throat> Mick Cripps plug. The uh, Fireboys, Nigel Mogg on lead vocals. Have you had a chance to hear that? No, I've never even heard of that. Hold on, I'm going to write that down. It's called hey, The Brutalist? There you go, Casey, School and Eddie Trunk. Yeah, the brutalist Mick Cripps. It's he's not. Uh, he hasn't dropped off the face of the earth. He's actually a friend of mine, and he uh, released an awesome album. It's kind of seventies pub rock, a little bit, kind of in the vein of Faces, with a little bit. Do you remember the band Japan? Sure, nothing wrong with any of that. Yeah, yeah, no, great record. It came out uh, earlier in the year, maybe March, uh, but it was a solid record. And they're actually, it was, I think, it came out on Cleopatra, and they are recording a. Uh, new album I i've never I even think. heard of it what else you got oh. casey uh number three same as uh everyone else we got judas priest <coughs> excuse me what well, this fight the content he chokes on the tecate pardon me i'm burping it was fine tecate i've I'm never even heard of it we'll be back again what else you got oh. casey uh number three same as uh everyone else we got judas priest <coughs> excuse me what well, this fight the content <laughs> Uh, Casey, you, you all right? Yeah, he's super yeah, sorry, great. Was, Couldn't I be better. Take a little swig there. I've <laughs> got a crack, crack voice. <laughs> he's, Anyways. Casey's cracking himself up. <laughs> back to the list. Uh, Judas Priest, Firepower. I agree with okay. uh, most of your callers here. I think that's a pretty solid album. I don't know album. if he got any more in. Uh, but... Number two is just a seven-inch that came out by a band called Wildlife. Uh, actually, out of New York, New Jersey there, where you're from. Uh Awesome band, I think far superior to the Struts. They're a little more. There you go. We'll punky, dig on the truck. Everyone on the just check them out. Wildlife with a Y, W Y L D L I F E. They had a full length that came out last year that was amazing. It's a rock. It's punk. It's energy. They look cool. Awesome band. And uh, last but not least, a band called Bad Sports. Also a little bit off the uh, map, but kind of a uh, cars influenced garage rock hard rock uh album the album is called constant stimulation and i highly recommend that everyone check that album out it is a by the uh, way casey underdog, sent me the vinyl to that maybe i'll play something from all that. right casey thank you very much for listening and thank you for the call i appreciate that uh casey with a uh, a, d- a number of his selections deep and and sort of off the grid but off again grid. if that's truly what you loved maybe you're turning some people onto it 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 again, all of this speaks- by the way Eddie Trunk his top 2 out al- his top 3 albums Miles Kennedy solo album slash his fa- oh no his top 3 Hailstorm The Struts and Slash To the enormous challenges that are out there for rock acts now trying to get a foothold like 
All right, you get the idea. Call into the Eddie Trunk Show, friends, and uh, put some Rock and Roll Geek catchphrases in there. Even if you can get the name Rock and Roll Geek Show or Michael Butler in there, that would be that would be very fun. That's a good way you can uh, contribute to the value for value model. Thank you, Casey, for doing that, waiting on hold for an hour and 15 minutes. That was awesome. All right. Maybe I should play, you know, should I play some Bad Sports for Casey? Casey sent me the vinyl of this Bad Sports album. Put it up here. It's called Constant Stimulation. The band, the band's called Bad Sports. I had never heard of them, but this is this self self released. It is on. Shit, I can't even see that name of that record. My vision is just horrible. <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what label this is on, but it's vinyl. So I maybe I'll play something from that. Let me find my Rock and Roll Geek Show playlist here. All right, for Casey, for doing, for calling into the Eddie Trunk Show, like a good rock and roll geek friend that he is. Here is, what do I want to play? Don't Deserve Love from Bad Sports. The record's called Constant Stimulation. His favorite album of the year, Don't Deserve Sports. The band is called Bad, wait a minute. Don't Deserve Love, the band is called Bad Sports. <laughs> There you go. Bad sports don't deserve love. I like that. That's a good song. Thank you, Casey. You know, you don't you don't have to only call into the Eddie Trunk show. Call into any show. Call into a sports talk radio show. Call into your local TV station. Get on a local TV station on video. And if you do it, try to record it and send me the audio file. That would be just unbelievably awesome. And I'll play it on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. That's a good way to support this show, friends. Thank you again, Casey. Okay, yesterday, speaking of new uh, songs, did I speak of new songs? I don't know. But yesterday, I talked to my friend uh, Sven Spacebrain, who plays in a band called Torpedo Head, who I've known for a long time, since way back when I was when American Heartbreak uh, was going, and we toured Europe several times. And that, when we met Sven, he had a band called the Spacebrains. Well, yesterday, 
Well, he contacted me about a week ago and told me that he had a new his band had a new song out. His band's called Torpedo Head, and they wanted to release it and he wanted to premiere it on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. And he wanted to know if he could come on and talk about the song. And so I said, of course, because Sven's a friend of mine and uh, always happy. I love his band. I, I love Space Brains and I love Torpedo Head as well. So I said, of course, Sven. So yesterday we talked on the phone. He was in Germany, and I'm going to play that for you right now. Me and Sven. This one goes about a half hour, so I'm going to go take a, you know, a pee, and uh, let my little conversation with Sven go right now. Hope you like. It. Hey, Sven, how's it going? Yeah, it's going quite good. Everything how's, fine. How is the weather there in Germany? Are you still in Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting pretty cold now. It wasn't so cold the whole time for for winter time, but it's getting cold now. You know, one thing that every podcaster, everybody who listens to podcasts wants to hear is the weather report. <laughs> that's that's so rock and roll. <laughs> yes. It was my duty. It's our duty to give people the weather in Germany. Where where in Germany is it again? Dortmund? That's uh, Frankfurt area. Frankfurt, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Again, for people who don't know, Sven Space Brain, I've known for a long time since you were in a band called The Space Brains, when American Heartbreak <clears throat> played oh, Europe, yeah. and we met you guys there, cause we, and we were both Wild Hearts fans. And, and still are. We have been fans and friends ever since. Well, kind of friends. We don't talk to... Eh, we hate each other, to be honest. <laughs> no. For 13 years now, we, we hate each other. It's been 30 <laughs> years, really? Yeah, it's wow. been not, not 30 years, <laughs> 13. Oh, yeah, 13, that's more like yeah. it, yeah. So how is everything over there in Frankfurt? Yeah, it's qu quite good. We're uh, we're just getting ready to release a second new video. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping you like the track. So Torpedo Head is the band. If, how many songs do you have recorded for the new album? Because the last album was really good. I think I gave it, uh, what was it? My, it was like in the top five, I thought I put it in, on my top ten of 2017 or 16. Uh, it came out in <laughs> two, 2016, yeah. Um, we did six new songs um, be, because we didn't go into the studio and record them. Basically recorded them um, in our basement. We just started yeah, f f making demos and they got better and better. And yeah, we ended up building like our own studio in our basement, recording um, rehearsal place. And uh, yeah, in, in the end, they sounded really cool. And um, but we got to a point, you know, when you can't really get better because there's just some something missing that you don't have when you like work in the studio or, or you have a real studio for years and years so we we sent them for for the mix to to our uh, producer who did all, all our records and uh, he got he listened to them and he said it sounds great and, and he can do something with that and he did a mix and he sent it back to us and yeah we were going like wow <laughs> cool so now we, we we can do the same sound in our basement so we started out with six songs but we're working on more so the hardest thing when you have a home studio is to uh, probably I would recording the drums is the hardest thing to get down onto uh, the hard drive, right? Yeah, you have to you have to figure it out. We we worked with like one track, and then we did the drums again and again and again. And uh, our our drummer ended up like I I don't know I I I lost track because like every. A few weeks he came. I just bought a new rec uh, a new drum set. Uh -huh. <laughs> Didn't like the old one, so I think we had like three uh, drum sets on on those records. Uh, no, not records on the demos. And then in the end, yeah, it sounded real cool. So yeah, we did a lot of work in there. <laughs> so did you have to like wrap, like make a little um, partitions for the drums, and then um, and then mic each drum individually? You had. No, no, no. We just um, we we rec recorded the whole set, and then we just uh, did, did a li little bit of experimenting there and there. Ah, it doesn't sound like that. to turn a knob a bit to there, and uh, yeah, and I, I, you just start at some place and then you finish at another place, but you don't really remember how you got from yeah. from here to there. You just put <laughs> a couple of mics in front of the drums until it sounded good. 
Yeah, yeah, just like that. No, yeah. Nothing, nothing fancy, and then just into a into a cheap mixing board. Nothing really special, and yeah, then then record the whole thing. And yeah, we didn't do. We, we try to leave it as natural. We uh, we would try to ha uh, make it sound like on on our last records, but also leave it like natural. Um, the whole thing also was a bit when before we always go into the studio or went into the studio for the last records we we did everything like demos and they sound really cool and then uh, of course the record always sounds great but there's uh, there was always something a little bit missing you know like yeah. the the faults you have on the demos that you loved, that you grown grown to love you know little little things that you can't really repeat and these these things are sometimes too too clean when you go into the studio because you only have like one week and you have to nail everything and those those little faults that that just make make it sound good and plus if you know what I mean yeah plus when well, a lot of people when they they go oh I like the way the demos sound better but I think the main thing is when everybody get everybody's a lot more loose when they're in the rehearsal studio you know re rehearsing yeah. at practice and then when they yeah. go in the studio they get kind of nervous and are really trying their hardest to make it right and it kind of stiffens everything up a little bit yeah it's it's a, a bit of that and also because of the the producers tend to lean to oh you got to do that again or oh, something wasn't right you got to do that again yeah. and there are things that you would have left on, on the demo because you think they sound good and it's always like a two-edged sword you know some the, the producers they they know things that are right that you don't really hear and the other way way around so now we got something in the middle which is pretty cool it's and it's sounding sounding great but there's still these these faults you have there and, and plus when you're in the studio you, you're being charged by the day or by the hour so you're you know money's in the back of your mind when you're recording it in your home studio or whatever you got all the time in the world yeah that's great you can like you, and you can like work on one track for for like two three weeks maybe even a month you know and Is that say, what you ah, did? well we'll skip it today i don't feel good today recording let's do it next week something like that you know is this studio at your house or in the rehearsal room no it's in the rehearsal room okay. yeah so do you yeah. go do you, do you go there by yourself sometimes and, and um like once you no, but the but the other big I it's it's a little bit far f away from you have to drive like one hour. But the other really? guys they just live around the corner, so they can like record drums, and um, then a week later I get in, and then we I can do uh, vocals or guitars, and or just leave like a guide guitar track, and then okay guys, you just you try to put the drums on when I'm not there. So yeah, that that helps a lot, you know, if you don't. For, for the time if you're like working and if not everybody's always in, in, in the same place that's that's a cool thing you can work on so it's your band it's kind of, you're the you're pretty much the guy in charge of the band right yeah but you have to drive to them to go to, to practice <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's not it's not I don't know how it is in in, in your area but it's not that easy to find uh, 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 rehearsal places in over here in Germany. Either you have to pay, or or you get something that's really cool for free. And ours is really cool for free, oh. and we don't have to go any uh, pay for for a rehearsal space. One it's not that easy to find good rehearsal space. Is it at one of the guys' houses? Uh, no, not not really. It's like um. It it was a youth center some time ago, but they uh, they changed it into some uh, other cultural stuff. You know, there's dancing groups and other stuff upstairs, and we're downstairs. So, yeah, and we don't have to pay. That's cool. Huh. Why don't you? Just, is one, does like one of the guys' girlfriends run the place or something like that? No, no, no. They just like you, and they let you stay there, let you practice for free. Yeah, our drummer, he like he knows every. Buddy in in the city, he lives there. At, at the, I don't know. Everywhere I go, he goes. Hey, hey how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> so, he got the connections there, so that's cool. <laughs> so you live in Frankfurt. Where's the rehearsal place? Uh, that's like uh, one one hour. You have to drive to a place called Burstadt. Gerstadt. Yeah, okay. it's 
it's not the the center of the world. <laughs> every place, every place in Germany, every town in Germany has their own beer, don't they? Yeah, nearly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't. There, there's also some beer coming coming from that area there. Yeah, yeah. What is the Frankfurt the, beer? Frankfurt beer uh, is is Binding. Binding, B I N D I N G. B I N D I N G. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Binding. Yeah. And what about yeah. his? What about the town where you guys rehearse? Uh, they. I don't know if if it's exactly from the town because they always they we always got a fridge filled with beer. Um, I think it's from there or, or from the next uh, next little little town there. I don't know how it's called, like some Eichstatt or something like that. Huh. It's it's, just, it's next to a, a graveyard. I forgot what kind the of beer brewery. we drank when we were in Munich. What's the beer of Munich? Uh, oh, there's lots of beer in Munich. What is they, the big they beer? Have like, that's the, the Oktoberfest beer they have. They have Erdinger. That's the, Erdinger, the Weizen beer. Erdinger, yeah. I think that was the beer, Erdinger. That was, yeah. I like that beer. Yeah. Or what's also very popular in like rock and roll scene there is uh, from from Hamburg, the uh, called Astra. It's got a little little uh, anchor on it. It's like a red oh, red beer. They like it because the can looks cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's like Pabst <laughs> your head. It's like your head re that doesn't really <laughs> like it in the morning yeah. when you had too much of it. It's like Paps. <laughs> it's like Paps Blue Ribbon here. Yeah, yeah, that that could be yeah. It's the punk rock hipster beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys still drink the beer like uh, room temperature? Who drinks beer in room temperature? Well, when we because I remember when we toured Europe, we had to really um, we had to get our our road, our manny our road manager or the guy who booked our tours for us. We had to we had to go through a lot of shit to get our beer cold. We liked our beer ice cold, and everybody looked at us like. Oh no! These fucking Americans—they want their their beer cold. I, I don't. I, I don't know anybody who drinks a beer warm. <laughs> yeah, so you like your beer. There's ice something cold. strange if you like yeah, beer warm. Yeah, I agree. You like you like your beer ice cold too. Yeah, of course. I, cool. I just said we, we have a fridge in the in the rehearsal space, so it has to be cold. Yeah, good. I'm glad. <laughs> no That's way good. around that. Right. So we weren't we weren't being divas. We were we like yeah, good. No. Everything is normal with you. <laughs> <laughs> so everything else okay with Torpedo Head? The same members as last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. Like, like I said, we like we we're working now recording our stuff and the the videos. We just we released all the last videos. We also do them by ourselves. So we're really having a lot of fun with that stuff. Who edits them? Uh, that's our bass player. Mm. I'm yeah. like the. I'm like the director, the geek, yeah. you know. Yeah, you say, you're, you're the <laughs> you visionary. Have to put it like that, yeah. And uh, he does all the technical stuff, the editing and stuff. You're the boss man, and he's the um, he's the guy he's my the technical help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you still write? No, but, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that, but it it, it works great. <laughs> is because I don't have the like the time or the the patience to sit for hours and hours and edit that stuff yeah it's, from yeah i always do that really really fast and then it's cool it's fun it's fun for a while but then it gets it gets tedious and boring to me i used to do it for a living and i don't like doing it anymore yeah <clears throat> you you can't do you can't do everything you like you can't figure out uh like the, the the ideas for the video and and do the filming and and also the editing and, and yeah write the songs so, somewhere you have to <laughs> draw yeah, a line that's right yeah be, you can be creative like for everything but yeah at, at the end you have to yeah have to do because then you got nothing else to do then <laughs> it takes a while to get uh to realize that because some people like to be in charge of everything, and it, it's too much. Yeah, you should you should know your your uh, your limitations or how how you want to pronounce it. Like Clint Eastwood said, "Man's got to know his limitations." Yeah, good one. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> how how long is how when's the last time you guys changed a member? How long has this got this group of guys been together? Oh, it's not. It's, it's well, let me think. It's like five. It's like five years now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's one thing that I don't don't like is having to work in a new band member. It's it sets everything back. 
yeah yeah but we're, we're we're past that it's it's really really cool the way we're like we're all all on the same level and yeah it's just when when you go to rehearsal it's just fun even if if n nothing works out and we don't record or even don't do any practicing or whatever it's just hanging out is fun and cool you know you guys any, any of you guys married um yeah all of us really <laughs> really yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So the girls are all okay with it. The girls are all friends with each other? Yeah, it's all cool. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, it's all well, working out. Are you guys gigging a lot? No, we're not gigging really at all at the moment. Also, for the the last weirdly years, we, we took a little break from, from all the gigging things because we got to a point, you know, when, when we realized, hey, man, We've been like gigging for like 20 years now, also with other bands before Torpedo at like nonstop, like every like every weekend, every like or every two two weekends with little tours between and on top of that also recording the albums and stuff and we never really like did a break like for even like a half a year and yeah, so we thought it was really time to take a little break we, we didn't like sit down and say okay we're, we gotta take a break now it just like it just went that way and then yeah so we're not really <laughs> we're more like into to like really that creative stuff at the moment you know like yeah, writing new stuff recording it doing the videos it's it's more fun than the the gigging at the moment yeah so this is the second song that you, that's come out. Yeah, yeah. What was the last Just, one called? Last one was called "I Don't Care." Don't care mm -hmm. about you, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And this one's called "Ain't Your Life." The last one was good. I liked it a lot. I played it. How many podcasts played that song? Um, I don't know, four, five, six. Which one? All, all these podcasts that always play our stuff. You know, when we did we did that video with all the podcast guys. At the at the beginning. Oh yeah, the Decibel Geek, uh, Chris from Decibel <laughs> oh, Geek. Uh, I don't know who all, else. Rock and Roll Geek Show. Uh, <clears throat> who else what was it? All these guys, you know the Jerry, the one that always talks like this. I don't. Listen, <laughs> I don't listen to other music podcasts. I don't know. I know Chris from Decibel Geek, but I don't know any of the other guys really. So okay. <clears throat> he talks like this. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like an exciting show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, all the all these guys, they're all cool. They they like our stuff and yeah. So yeah. all great fun. What's the so first they, what is the first podcast you ever um started sending your stuff to? Actually yours. There you go. We didn't was, send it, you wanted to have it. I was hand I had my hand on the hang up button. Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready to hang up on you if you wouldn't have said that. So thank you. <laughs> All right. So is this has anybody heard this song Ain't Your Life yet? No. This is like the mm. the pre premiere. Mm. We haven't released the mm. video yet. Premiere is on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. World premiere. Yes. Uh, new Torp, you want to hear it now? You want to play it? So I can also t tell you t tell you how the song goes. <laughs> now go well, ahead and play it. Are, are you gonna about, like play the whole song, or are you gonna stop and make well, your comments? Well, that's what I was or? thinking. I will, How about I'll I'll I will give my thoughts as it going as it's going. Yeah. And if I have any questions, what? And then we'll when then we'll after I get finished running my mouth and you get finished running your mouth and stuff, then we'll um, play the song without any interruptions. How about that? That's a that's actually a good idea. Right. You should do it with all your shows like that. <laughs> yeah. Then you would have like the show would go like for three four hours. That's good good <laughs> idea. I'll call it listening with Butler. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ain't your life. Here we go. Torpedo. Here we go. Torpedo. Okay. I like that little ACDC intro, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Back it up. <laughs> Oh, and a little bit of um, <clears throat> you got another thing coming, influence, right? You That's Judas actually Priest? good good reference. I I, have, I I didn't really notice that until you just said it. Right. Yeah, it's cool, Back cool it up reference. Again. That's good though. 
Or ACDC meets Priest. Yeah. You're the only guitar player, right? Yeah. Okay. Didn't pick up my six string just to please you. I didn't buy no notebook, baby. Rock the world to soothe your soul. Good catchy chorus. You know, it reminds me a little bit of American Heartbreak a little bit. What's that band? I never heard that before. Yeah, they're <coughs> all right. Back, I like the chorus. So there's a lot of guitar parts. If you play, if guys start playing live again, you're gonna have to get a backup guitar player. Mm, not, not really. I got a version, to like um, a version in the middle that that has like um, those two guitars mixed with one, so it would work out some way. Drums sound pretty good for just being in a live room. Yeah. And then the bass player just went direct, or did you put a mic in front of his amp? Oh, just uh, di directly in the mixing board. Breakdown. You got to have a breakdown. When you did the drums, did you like, um, in, to, in order to enhance the snare or kick drum and stuff like that, did you like overdub a kick drum or overdub a snare, like direct? No, nothing like that. Just one, one microphone for for uh, drums, uh, for, for snare, one so, for so, bass drum. So he Just, didn't overdub any drum parts? No. Nice job. I applaud it, Sven. Spencer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for sending me. I will play that song in its entirety right after I right right after um, I'm done here. Cool. So, Sven, uh, what did you got planned for the rest of the day? Uh, not not that much. Gonna gonna I guess drink another beer or something. What, what time is we, it there? It's we already like, got nearly uh, eleven o'clock. So. It's 11, 11 p.m. on a Friday night, and because yeah. it's one p.m. on a Friday afternoon in San Francisco here, um, we have different time zones. So I I had no work today, so I thought that uh, it'd be good to get Sven on because I wouldn't be able to get you on over the weekend. So. Any plans cool, for the rest? Out. What are you gonna do? Just hang, hang around, and watch TV with the wife tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's not, the wife? Not really up to doing that much tonight. Where's the wife? And right you? Now? Are you gonna make a big party? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. At my age, a uh, big party consists of sitting in front of the television. <laughs> like probably probably like you too. Or or going fishing or hunting or things like uh, that. I'm going to. Well, there's the weather's really bad here, so I can't go fishing. I'm going to go fishing next weekend. But I am going tomorrow. I'm going to a big outdoor show, like an outdoor uh, convention. So it's a bunch of um, fishing exhibits and hunting. Expo, you know, exhibitions and things like that. So that's what I do in my for fun now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that, it sounds cool. It's, yeah, it's that's cool what old to do people out, do. Out there stuff. We do that here also. You know, there's a lot, a lot of forests and places, mountains you can climb up to over here. So, are you really married, or you just got a girlfriend? No, I am really. Where's the wife? Not not here now. <laughs> Where's she on eleven o'clock at night? I don't know. Somewhere around the house. Somewhere around the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so she's in. The, she's home then. She's at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she gonna go out without you tonight? Or are you guys gonna sit at home and watch TV together? I don't know. We we didn't. We have to figure something out yet. I was, watch, like, I was busy doing this internet stuff now again. Maybe watch it. It always, always takes ages to, if, if you know, I've, I've done this Skype thing for a while now, and you have to all always refigure everything. That's really a pain in the ass. Now, are uh, you going to wait? Because I'm going to probably do post this show on Saturday. Are you going to wait until this show is posted before you uh, give it to all the other podcasters? Are you going to do it this, this Saturday tomorrow. or next, tomorrow. next week? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, cool. No, no, I'm, we're gonna release the video next week. Okay. And gonna send the track. I mean, next week to others. So. All right. So you're not gonna you send have, it to Decibel Geek until after this show airs, right? I, I don't know who Decibel Geek is anyway. <laughs> Guess you do. <laughs> no. You hear that, Chris Sinzak? No, I don't know that show. Don't you really? dare play it before I get it out near Chris Sinzak. I, I never heard that show. BJ Cramp. All right, enough of that. Don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to get your music. It's good. You got to get. You got to send it out to podcasts and stuff because no, no, where else are people going to hear it? Yeah, nowhere. Anybody so. ever That's... tell? Anybody ever contact you and say, "Hey, I heard your music on the Rock and Roll Geek Show" or something like that? There are a lot of people. Oh, really? Are you we bullshitting? Have, yeah, we that. Uh, but I think I told you already. The the last last two albums are there are guys like that. Are sticking with us since the the first show we we did oh, when we good. did the, the the album before the last one. There are like I don't know like about ten people that are that stuck with us from that time. What's the name of the show that where the guy whispers, where the guy talks? Uh, that's Red Red Wine on a Sunday. Oh, Red Wine on Sunday. Okay. Does anybody yeah. ever say, "Hey, I heard your music on Red Wine on Sunday"? There are also some people. Okay. All right. Well, good. Glad to hear it. I know that guy. I know that guy. What's, huh? his, what's his name yeah. again? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No. I know Red Brown on Sunday. <laughs> and I know, but I like end, all the you're, guys. You're the, the yeah. first of them all. And yeah. <laughs> we're, all, we're all little podcasters. I like them all. I like, I love Chris Sinzak. And uh, the only one I don't love is Joey Rock and Roll, that motherfucker. You know that guy? No, I don't know. I'm him. kidding. I love him too. <laughs> never, never heard of him. <laughs> all right. Sven Space Brain. Uh, can you say something? Say, um, this is Sven from Torpedo Head, and you're listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, and this song is, this is our new song, Eight Your Life. Say all of that in German. In German? Yes. Uh, I'd rather say it in some other language. <laughs> do, you not, do you speak German? What is your, what is your uh, besides English, what is your main language? German and English and a little bit of French, but not not that good. <clears throat> can you say it in German so I can uh, hold this on for per perpetuity? Uh, I can do it. <laughs> Just a moment. <laughs> How many okay. beers have you had so far? How many beers in are you? Uh, not, not not really that much. Okay. <laughs> that was just a plate here or something. I moved to the kitchen because of the the great acoustic here. Is this a cell so, phone? No, you're on Skype. You're on the laptop. So. No, I'm, I'm from the laptop. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it in English. I like that more. <laughs> All right. Well, you don't like the German language. I like German language. 
Well, if I liked it that much for for rock and roll, I would sing in German. Do but you, do I don't you, like I don't listen to German <clears throat> German music. I don't like that. That's that's it sounds too strange for me. What is German music? Is that Rammstein? No, not yeah, yeah. Also, but that's uh, like if you turn on the radio, it's like like. I don't know. It's like music, like you, you hear on the radio, only with German language. So there's, there's, they got everything now here. It's really since the last last ten years, like it went really popular. So it's like more German music than than English music on the radio. Uh, that um, ninety nine Luft balloons. That's German, right? That's like German. Yeah. Is yeah. your wife German? Yes. Yeah. Do you guys speak German to each other or English? Yeah, you know, of course. We German? Speak German. I'm only talking about like like music, like rock and roll. That like only works for me like in, in English because you know my, my influences are are English, I don't know, from yeah, starting with A C D C Beatles, whatever, and I I don't listen to any German German music. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You not were, not in rock and roll. All right. That's, well, I was hoping you would do it in German and English, but all right, since you refused to do it in German, that's difficult uh, here, man. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, it's Sven Space Brain here from Torpedo Head. We got a new single out called Ain't Your Life, and you're listening on. Um, no, do it again. <laughs> take two. Cut that. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> it could have hey, been better in German, space, man. Uh, you should have done it in German. All right, take three. Yeah, no. Take take <laughs> take four. Go ahead. Hey, it's Sven Space Brand here from Torpedo Head, and you're listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. We got a new single out called Ain't Your Life, and this is a premiere. All right, there you go. Was that good? Yeah, that perfect. I would rather <laughs> heard it in German, but that was good. All right, Sven <laughs> Space Brain, thank you for coming on. Hope you I'm have glad a, to come. Always, always will. Say hello to the wife. What's her name? I'm not gonna tell you on the radio. Oh, the <laughs> secret. Yeah. Say hello to your secret wife from your friend Michael Butler. Okay. I will. All right. Talk. To, all right. All right, Sven. Talk to you later, friend. Okay, man. Right. Bye. All right. Bye. Well, there you go, my friend. Uh, Spin space brain. All right, let's listen to the song without my stupid comments on it. We'll listen to it in its entirety. Turbohead, brand new world premiere on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It is called Ain't Your Life. <laughs> Pick up my six string Just to please you I didn't buy no notebook, baby Rock the world to soothe your soul
There you go. Torpedo Head, Ain't Your Life. That's a good tune. See, rock and roll is alive and well, friends. All right, I'm opening up another beer. This is a Modelo. I just pulled this out of the refrigerator. I thought I was out of these things, but I uh, thought I was reaching for a Tecate, but I reached for a Modelo. Let me take a sip of this fine Modelo. Ah, some sad news to report. I found this about this, found out about this today. Um, Somebody posted, actually several people posted this on the Rock and Roll Geek um, Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do approve people. Just, uh, you got to answer a couple questions to get approved. So join the face, the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, friends. It's a lot of rock, a lot of real rock fans, okay? Anyway, so I, so sad news was posted on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page. Ted McKenna died today 868 ted mckenna was originally in the alex harvey sensational alex harvey band <clears throat> he's played with just about so many people great great drummer i saw michael schenker last time he came to san francisco or to the bay area on that temple of rock uh schenker fest he was the drummer i believe he was i'm pretty i'm i'm 99 positive that ted mckenna was a drummer he has played with <clears throat> Greg Lake, he has played with the Sensational Alex. He was one of the founding members of the Sensational Alex Harvey Band, I think. Played with Michael Schenker Group. He played on uh, Salt Attack and Built to Destroy, uh, Rock Will Never Die, some, some stuff. stuff. Uh, he has played with Ian Gillen. So many people this guy has played with. I'm going to read the, the uh, obituary here. This was on Blabbermouth. Scottish drummer. Oh, he also played on Dan McCafferty's solo album from the 70s. <laughs> he played with uh, Billy Rankin from Nazareth as well on his solo album, who I need to get on the Rock and Roll Geek Show, by the way, Billy Rankin. Scottish drummer Edward Ted McKenna, who has played with the Sensational Alex Harvey Band, Rory Gallagher, Michael Schenker Group, and Ian Gillen, has died at the age of 68. The news of McKenna's passing was confirmed on Facebook by a, fr on Facebook by a friend who wrote, Pardon me, I need to burp up this fine Tecate. Oh. The news of McKenna's passing... Okay, <clears throat> let's see. For everyone who loved him, Ted died this morning from a hemorrhage during elective surgery. Freak occurrence and a huge surgical team fought for 10 hours to save him. Unfortunately, there was no solution to stop the bleeding and he faded away without ever knowing. I'm going to miss him so much. Now, I'm kind of unclear what happened here. I'm going to read this because I have this news just came out like a few hours ago. Earlier today, Michael Schenker wrote on, wrote on Facebook, we are totally heartbroken to hear about Ted McKenna, our amazing drummer and dearest friend, passing away this morning. It's a massive shock and huge loss to Ted so suddenly. You know, huge loss to lose Ted so, so suddenly. I still not, don't get what, how, what happened. A hemorrhage. He died from a hemorrhage during elective surgery. So apparently he was having some kind of elective surgery, a routine surgery. Yeah, he was probably going in for a routine operation, maybe a facelift or something like that. And then he had a hemorrhage and he died. Oh, man. I hate to hear that shit. I'm sorry to bring the show down, friends. Oh. He always had a smile on his face and was one of the most sincerely genuine people you could ever have the pleasure of meeting. One of the great rock drummers. He always played from the heart, and his heart was music. Rest in peace, Ted. We will miss you. Former Michael Schenker Group bass player Chris Glenn also reacted to reports, writing, Awoke this morning to the terrible news that our beloved brother Ted has left us. Seemingly, he passed away during complications from his operation for his hernia. Oh, okay, he had a hernia operation. Wow, that's kind of a routine operation nowadays, isn't it? Oh man, my heart most my most heartfelt condolences to all his friends and family. Just can't believe it. Ex Marillion Ex Marillion frontman and prog rock legend Fish, more, who also he also played with on Fish's solo album, I believe, mourned the death of his friend, saying, "I just heard the tragic news today that my dear friend Ted McKenna passed away this morning. A fabulous musician and one of the all-time greats who inspired so many rock drummers across de generations. He was truly 
a legendary stick man who graced so many kits behind so many world famous bands. I had the enormous pleasure of not only working in with the studio in the studio with him, but also sharing stages in various incarnations over the years. He was a monster drummer with endless energies who played with so much soul and passion and drove songs with a power and grace like no other. But it wasn't only his playing that made him such a legend. He was a beautiful man who could drift from the comic to the serious, abound with stories and anecdotes, a perpetual smile despite all the difficulties he encountered and suffered over the years with ne- never heard a bad had a bad word to say about anyone i loved his bear hugs and his oh man this is making me want to fucking cry i loved his bear hugs and his enthusiasm for everything always positive and always there for you if you need it and he was a man's man and i'm honored to have had him as a true friend my heart goes out to his family and friends, of which he had so many, and to all the people he touched with the music over his long years with us, who will be deeply missed and never replaced. Love you, Ted. R.I.P., brother. <sighs> the guy from Status Quo, John Coglin, or drummer from, from Status Quo, John Coglin. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Very sorry to receive the sad news of our dear friend Ted McKenna, fab drummer and such a great guy. We shall miss you. Neil Murray, <clears throat> best known for working in Whitesnake, Black Sabbath, and Gary Moore, completely shocked by the very sad news of the sudden death of Ted McKenna, who I spent time with only three weeks ago with, at the Cozy Powell Birthday Bash, a lovely guy and a great drummer who will be much missed. <clears throat> Again, the guy went in for a hernia operation and died. Motherfucker, that sucks, man. Although primarily known as a rock musician, Ted also worked with jazz maestro John Etheridge, Juno Award-winning Canadian blues guitarist Amos Garrett, and American soul duo Womack and Womack. Most recently, he toured and recorded with Gary McAvoy, Marshall Scherpenzeel, and Davey Knowles in Band of Friends, a celebration of the music of Rory Gallagher, and Michael Schinkerfest, which, re- yeah, he played with Michael Schinkerfest, which reunited the legendary guitarist and three former MS- in- MSG singers Gary Barton and Graham Bonnet and Mark, Mark and Robin McCauley. Yes, I went to that show with a uh, friend of the show, Eric <clears throat> Eric Mortensen, uh, Mordo's Metal Museum. <sighs> In a 2013 interview with Hit Channel, McKenna said he had many influences as a drummer. Early ones were Fred Astaire's feet, Sandy Nelson, Tony Meehan, Brian Bennett of the Shadows, Bobby Elliott of the Hollies, Mitch Mitchell from Jimi Hendrix, Carmine Apice, the Vanilla Fudge and everybody else. Buddy Rich, Tony Williams from Miles Davis, the name only two. Too many great drummers to mention, but my band supported Robert Plant and the Band of Joy in 67, and I saw and met John Bond, and we both raved about Carmine and Peace, but watching him play changed my attitude towards the drum kit. <sighs> he replaced Cozy Powell in Michael Schenker Group, because I, I think Cozy was the original drummer for Michael Schenker Group. At least he played on uh, that second album. I think he was on the first one, too. Let me take a sip of this fine Modelo. I'm going to get a little parched. Uh, what else about this? About Ted McKenna? Very sad, man. Very sad news. Lots of pictures here, for everybody posing with pictures of Ted McKenna. It looks like a really nice guy. He also played on um, Zal Clemenson, his solo stuff too, I believe. Rest in peace, Ted McKenna. You will be missed, sir. You are a rock and roll legend. And in honor of Ted McKenna's passing, I'm going to play something from Rory Gallagher from the Top Priority album. Rory Gallagher... Literally unknown in the United States, but a legend in Ireland. He's an Irish guitar player, Irish guitar hero, as a matter of fact. Him and was uh, was Gary Moore from Ireland too? Not positive about that, but he's up there. One of the most beloved guitar players of all time, Roy Gallagher. Well, Tad McKenna played on this Top Priority album. I forgot who sent me this, but whoever did, thank you for sending it to me. Here is... A song called Philby. Once again, rest in peace, the great Ted McKenna. The world lost a great fucking rock and roll drummer. Okay. 
and coming from the cold. A deep in action on a secret mission. Contacts broken down. Time tracks by. I'm above suspicion. There's a voice on the telephone. in peace Ted McKenna one of the unsung heroes of rock and roll not many people know that name Ted McKenna but <sighs> that's a bummer man all right speaking of bummers I got uh well <laughs> what am I talking about well there's a, there is a bummer email that I'll get to in a second here well, an email from well I might as well get to the bummer email okay so on mad at dad I made a passing comment about um, thinking about quitting podcasting. And I was just, I wasn't really thinking about, I was just talking off the cuff because I was in, like, like I said at the beginning of the show, I was, I think I've been in kind of a funk and uh, need to recharge the batteries. And I just mentioned to Dave Slusher, my podcast mentor and host of Mad at Dad and, and host of Evil Genius Chronicles that uh, sometimes I feel like quitting the podcast. I'm sure that a lot of people feel like giving up whatever they love to do, you know, and sometimes sometimes uh, you just get a little bit down, and I was kind of feeling a little bit down. Anyway, I, I mentioned that in passing. <clears throat> not really, you know, I'm not going to ever kill the rock and roll geek show at least i don't think so unless the donations die okay enough of that so after i said that i just said it once in passing i mean i'm it might i might have spent like 15 seconds on on the the topic and i got a 
thank you people for listening to the for Mad at Dad, by the way. I, I appreciate that. Because that's the only way people would have known, because I just mentioned it on that. And I got a shitload of responses and emails from people. One of I'm going to read one from Jason Wendleton. Michael, I was just listening to the latest Mad at Dad and heard you were talking about giving up the podcast ghost. Don't give up. I just signed on a, signed on as a patron for your show at the lowest level because the Russians hacked my bank account to my sh- to show my support. I did I thank Jason Wendleton on the donor segment? I don't think I did, Jason. Can you do me a favor, Jason, if you're listening to this, send me a screenshot or whatever of where you're donating and I'll I'll make sure I put that on the next episode. I pr- appreciate it, friend. And he goes, I've been listening to your show since 2005 and it means the world to me. And I know it means the world to many, many others. Stay frosty. Also wanted to thank you for reminding me to buy the new Jeff Whalen album. I love Czar and have been meaning to get Jeff's new solo record. I was listening to your best of 2018 and remembered that I never forgot that I never got it. Anyway, podcast, podcast, sell music, motherfuckers. Thanks for all that you do. All right. There, that's just one of the emails I got. I got a, a lot from people you know, telling me, please. I, I, now, you know, sometimes podcasters will put something like that out there just so they can try to get people to, uh, just to see if anybody wants them to keep doing the show. And I don't, I did, I did not mean for it to come out to do, I wasn't meaning to do that. If I want to kill the show, I'll just kill the show. If I, I don't need uh, people to, you know, tell me they listen or whatever but the people who did send that i appreciate it friends i'm not quitting the rock and roll geek show it's alive and well friends just keep the donations coming and i'll keep doing the show i'll probably keep doing the show without the donations maybe but i might only do like one show a year so thank you jason window for the email i really appreciate it another email from doug the the rock and roll geek show is alive friends all right let me take a sip of this fine modello the modello seems to be drying my mouth out a bit Ah, email from Doug Steele, the Detroit chapter. Michael, just finished listening to your podcast and just went out and bought Jeff Whalen's new solo album. Huh, there you go. I love the song you played on the podcast, and this is the reason why I listen to your podcast. It keeps loading up on my iTunes with great music. I'm at 40,000 songs now. Thank you so much for the suggestion. How many songs do I have on my iTunes? Let me look here. Songs. Oh, you got more than me. I only have 37,960, Doug Steele. Of course, I did have the iTunes crash. I lost, you know, I lost the entire, because I was going to pull a Michael Schenker song up to play before I found that great Rory Gallagher tune. And I lost the entire, every time, because I had an iTunes crash and lost every bit of music I had, and I had to put it all back on there. I believe I had, I lost every Michael Schenker group every msg album that i ever had so i i'm having to get all those again i think i just found somewhere that has the entire uh solo discography so yeah you got more you got me beat uh uh doug steel detroit friend of the show detroit chap chapter p.s he says he got a little addendum here he says, stay frosty, duck steel, friend of the show, Detroit chapter. P.S. My chemotherapy is almost over. And when all things settle down I, and I get my final bill, I will start sending you some money for the pot, for donations. Chemo fucking therapy. Oh, dude. Doug, can, ever, can everybody please say a prayer for Doug Steele, friend of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, Detroit, Rock, Detroit chapter? Rock and Roll Gods. Don't take another rock and roll geek friend for me. So many have died in the past. <sighs> I'm I'm praying for you, Doug Steele, friend. You're going to be the first podcast I'll give money to. And once again, a friendly reminder, I love Susie Quattro and everybody that comes out of Detroit. Speaking of Susie Quattro, Susie Quattro's got a new album coming out. And she seems to be real proud of it. She wrote with her, uh, the guy who... Um, the guy who wrote Stumbling In, uh, was it Mark Stuckey? Is that his name? I'm probably screwing that up. But their son they had together. She wrote most of the album with her son. And she seems to say it's really, really good. So I, I can't wait to hear that. Speaking of Susie Quattro, Doug Steele. 
And for shits and giggles, I sent you a picture of my Les Paul and my ES-335 and my drum kit. Drum kit. I'm a hack at drums, but it's fun. All right. Thank you, Doug Still. I really appreciate it, friend. One more email, and then we will play a song and get the hell out of here. I'll let you get on with your day, friends. Email from Chad Burns regarding the Richie Rano interview I just posted. Chad, or last, two weeks ago. Chad Burns here, longtime listener. First off, I know who stars are, but I'm not at all familiar with their music. <sighs> First four stars albums, friends. All the Capitol Records catalog. You can't go wrong. Top to bottom, every one of those albums is great. You will not, if you're a rock and roll fan, you will not be disappointed with no matter what stars Capitol Records solo album you pick up, you're going to be a fan. Any one of them. All right, sorry to interrupt, Chad Burns. Which I'm going to delve into. I'm going to delve into their music. But that interview with Richie Rana was amazing. Ass kissing time here. Oh, good. <laughs> everybody needs, like, like Chrissy Amphlis says, everybody needs their ass kiss once in a while, especially when you're in a funk. Not literally. literally. I mean, I don't want you to put your mouth down there when my got funk. All right. You know. <clears throat> your passion for stars and other bands you're into is incredible. So it's so refreshingly, seriously. It's so refreshing. Seriously. Keep it up. And I love you ripping on Eddie Trunk for his self-important shit he does and constantly repeating it. Insert Jonathan Travers' voice here. We get it, man. You've been in the music business for 30 fucking years. Fuck you! All right, stay frosty, Chad Burns. All right. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of Eddie Trunk because of all of his success. The guy des- but the guy deserves all the success he, he uh, has. But I got to say, listening to his daily show on, on Sirius, on Volume Channel on Sirius, same story over and over and over again. Eddie Trunk, we listen to your show every day. You don't have to keep repeating it. We know the stories. <sighs> your friend Michael Butler. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. We had a nice talk with Sven Space Brain from Torpedo Head. We had a funny call from Casey Crenshaw to Eddie Trunk Show. We got bummed out learning about Ted McKenna's death. We got a little bit of payola and discovered some great rock and roll from Turbo Lovers. We got bummed out reading Butler's emails about death and quitting podcasting and chemotherapy. We had a great time on a Saturday night, friends. I'm getting up at 3 in the morning. It is now 8.30. and My wife and I are getting up at 3 in the morning, driving five hours to Weaverville to look at some houses, looking to get like a maybe a retirement home up in the woods. As Ted Nugent said, living in the woods. So I'm getting up at 3 a.m. to go drive for 10 hours with my wife, and I'll be driving. So I'm going to wrap the show up now. Thank you for listening, friends. It really means the world to me. You have no idea. And thank you for the donations, because without your donations, this show would die horrible, putrid. <sighs> have a, of a hemorrhage, death. Thank you, friends. All right, I'm going to... So since we're la- now get feeling all melancholy about people dying and stuff, I might as well play something from Ginger Wildheart. I just found out this out from a friend of the show, Todd Cunningham, that because, uh, well, Ginger put out a folk album a couple years ago called Ghost in the Tanglewood, which is a great album. And there was a follow-up that he was recording called The Pessimist Companion. And I didn't know... I had no idea that it was already out. So apparently the the um, formal release is coming out this year, supposedly. But he did a Plaid's music and... Or was it a Plaid's music? No, I think he just released it on his Round Records site and uh, in, in November. And you can download all the songs. So that's what I... I, when, I when, when Todd Cunningham told me about that, I went to Round Records and downloaded the album and... Yeah, so now I have the new Ginger album, which, by the way, there's also a Wild Hearts album coming out this year, which, <sighs> enough said, top top 10 of 2019, I'm sure. 
So let's close out the show with something from Ginger Wildheart. The record is called The Pessimist Companion. If it was out, if it was formally out in 2018, it might have been in my top 10, but I just found out about it. So, and it's not formally out, it's just the, just the digital files are out. You can buy it on round records. I think I paid like eight, eight pounds, which whatever that means in US, probably about 12 bucks or something. I'm going to close out with a song from that album called The Pessimist Companion. The song is called, what do I want to play? I think I'm going to play the song called I Love You So Much. I'm leaving. Thank you for listening, friends. I'll talk to you soon, hopefully before the next two weeks. Thank you so much for listening. You can find me on the Facebook. On, well, you can find the show at rockandrollgeek.com first. I should always plug the stuff that's not on social media. Rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Leave me an audio comment. <clears throat> like if you call into Eddie Trunk Show or whatever, email me, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Record an audio comment on your phone, then email it to me, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. You can call the comment line, area code 706-621-ROCK, but it's a Skype in line, and I'd rather have an email. It's easier for you to do that way, and you don't have to deal with this bullshit Skype, because it, it cuts you off after 10 minutes, and sound quality blows, and everything else. All right. You can also find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. You can find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, rockandrollgeek, don't ask. Anything else? Any other ways to reach me? Eh, that's enough. Thank you for listening, friends. Here's Ginger Wildheart. I love you so much. I'm leaving. We'll talk to you soon, friends. <laughs> It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.